So in this video, we're going to be talking about the layers of the earth. And the earth is like an onion or an egg that has inner layers in the inside. And it's like good to think about it that way so you can picture it in your mind. But the fine piece of the shell or the tiny, tiny skin of the onion is or what we call the crust or the outside of the earth. And then in the middle, you get the mantle, which is a thick part of the earth or the filling. And then inside, you also have the outer and inner core. And that's kind of how the earth looks like when you see it in the inside. So, crust, mental, outer core, inner core. And you can actually separate the mental as well as the upper and lower mental because they're very different from each other. And we're going to be talking about that in the next slide. But first, let's talk about compositional zones of the earth. When we talk about crust, mental, outer core, inner core, upper mental, lower mental, what we're talking about is a composition of the earth. Because these things are made of different elements. Now, this very thin crust is only the first... 80 kilometers or so, just the very first tip of the Earth, less than 80 kilometers, depending on whether you talk about continental or oceanic crust, it's going to be thicker or, or thinner, and we're talking about that on the next slide, but first, notice that the continental crust is going to be made of, of materials like granite and the oceanic crust of materials like bas basalt, and that's if you're talking about igneous types of rocks, but either way, the most common elements in these things will be silicon, and oxygen and so the the most silicon and oxygen will be the most common elements on the outside of the earth and as you start going lower temperatures and pressures getting higher and the elements are getting denser you see when the earth was young and it was a molten ball of lava the denser elements fell to the inside while the lighter elements stayed on the outside we talked about that when we talked about the formation of the earth earlier in the year and so that means that the denser elements will be found on the inside and the lighter elements will be found on the outside. So silicon and oxygen will be on the outside. When you hit the mantle, you get things like per peridotite and other, other types of rock which are made mostly of elements like, for example, magnesium. So the mantle is going to be rich in magnesium. It's just easy to remember since it's magnesium rich. By the way, to remember that the crust is made of silicon, remember that a lot of the sand in the oceans is silicon based. Remember the siliceous ooze. And remember that obviously a lot of the, uh, there's a lot of oxidation or rusting that helps in, in, a, in the surface of the earth because of the contact with the atmosphere's oxygen. But either way, a lot of silicon and a lot of oxygen in the top layer, a lot of magnesium in the middle layer. Now the mantle is divided into upper and lower mantle because the upper mantle is a lot more plastic than the lower mantle, which is a lot denser. And we'll talk about that soon. But first, let's talk about the core. Now the core, outer or inner, is going to be made of iron and nickel. So iron and nickel, the most dense elements that we find mostly in the earth, are going to be down there. So now there are more dense, denser elements than that. But iron and nickel are going to be what our core is made of. And the temperatures are very, very high. And pressure is also very, very high down there in the core. Now, we're going to be talking about next on how, why you divide these layers into outer core, inner core, lower mental, upper mental, crust, and all of that in a structural sense. But these are, that you see here are the compositional zones. And they're divided like this, cross mental core, because of the elements that make them. Silicon and oxygen make the crust, magnesium mostly in the mantle and iron and nickel mostly in the core and remember that ha this happens because of the process of differentiation on the early earth that was basically like a river of, or an ocean of lava where the denser materials fell to the inside also notice that the mantle it stretches from this, those first 80 kilometers all the way down to 29 almost 3,000 kilometers deep into the earth so the, the biggest chunk of the earth will be taken off by the mantle and the upper mantle ends are about 660 kilometers deep. So, and then you get the core, which is going to go from there all the way to the inside of the earth. Okay, so remember the, the, the mantle, it's typically about two-thirds of the volume of the earth is taken up by the, the, the mantle. And then the core is, uh, takes about one-third of the volume of the earth. So the mantle is the biggest piece. And then the, the crust is going to be less, it's going to be less than one percent less than one percent of the volume of the earth is taken by the crust so make sure you know that as well okay so when you talk about the crust though there are two types of crust you have the continental crust and the oceanic crust and you can see the difference right here the continental crust at its thickest can get almost to 40 can get from 40 to 80 kilometers thick and you see how much bigger the continental crust is than the oceanic crust which is just a tiny tiny thin thing so the oceanic crust, which is a new crust coming from the mid-ocean ridge, the seafloor spreading, we're going to be talking about that in this chapter, is much thinner. 
It varies between 5 and 10 kilometers thick. And the continental crust, folded and bulked the way it is, it's between 40 and 80 kilometers thick. So you need to know that. You need to know that the continental crust and the oceanic crust are different. Now you also need to know that the continental crust is less dense than the oceanic crust is. You see, the oceanic crust is made of materials which are slightly denser. The basalt in the oceanic crust is denser than the granite of the continental crust. And so what that means is that when the two of them collide, like you see in this picture here, the oceanic crust tends to go underneath the continental crust because it's denser. All right, so typically it is the continental crust that stays on top and the oceanic crust that subducts underneath the continental crust doing plate tectonics. So that's going to be important later in the chapter, so make sure that you pay attention to that. Also, notice there here that we are talking about, you see on the screen, uh, the, some of the layers that we're going to be talking about next. You see that the it's talking about the lithosphere, the plastic asthenosphere, the upper, upper mantle, and the so forth. So you see that it's referring to these things. It's also talking about this slab. Slab is the piece of the oceanic crust that's being sinking underneath. Notice that it's also talking about the ridge over here, which is actually moving the plates apart of the ocean. And then at the other side, you have the slab going downwards into the, and is eventually going to melt as it hits the, the mantle and form new magma, which can then rise to uh, fill even more continental crust in the volcanoes. And you can see these things here. All right? So... We're going to be talking about all of these things in the next chapter, but not the chapter. But I wanted you guys to know about the differences between the continental and oceanic crust. The continental crust, of course, is going to be much thicker and made of de less dense materials or less thick. Uh, the oceanic crust is going to be denser and made it slightly thinner than the continental crust is going to be.